the misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old the pines were roaring on the height the winds were moaning So familiar star returns. Aaron, what in the world are we doing here? We're enjoying our first night of a very hard trip. <laughs> We're being pampered right now by some natural hot springs. This is uh, Boulder Hot Springs. Never been here before. It's our first night of a nine night trip in Olympic National Park. Uh, we have a lot in store for you. Uh, this is going to be a mountaineering route. Don't really know what we got coming up other than uh, some small glaciers, some snow fields, maybe some ice, some cross country route finding, some rock scrambling, some creek crossings. We have uh, all the basic equipment to do any of that. We got snow pro, we got helmets, crampons, ice axes, harnesses. Uh, a segment of climbing rope, the basics for some crevasse rescue. So uh, it's just, uh, this is gonna be one of the best that Olympic can, can throw at you. It's called the Bailey Range Traverse. We're doing a variation of it, a harder variation of it than what is uh, normally done. Pretty much the whole route that we're gonna do, uh, tomorrow we're gonna head up to Appleton Pass, and we head cross country from Appleton Pass to Cat Basin. In Cat Basin, we're going to climb Mount Carey, hopefully drop down the glaciated side of it and go right back up another side of it and drop down into Stephen Lake. And from there, we're going to go to uh, Ferry Basin. We're going to complete the Bailey Range Traverse, spend two days at Dogwell Rickson Pass, and then go down the Elwa, Elwa Snowfinger and hike the Elwa all the way back up to where we parked at the uh, Elwa entrance of Olympic. Uh, I've done a lot of backpacking in Olympic National Park, but I've never seen any of this before. So it's all new. It's the heart of the interior. Enjoy. Aaron, Sarah, and I are in the Olympic Mountains in Olympic National Park for the epic and legendary Bailey Traverse. We have our Olympic Wilderness Permits, so we're good for wilderness camping for till next July. The Olympic Mountains are a hostile environment, even for roads. 
This road will likely never be repaired ever again. Opposing views of nature, you know, one is the dam. Asphalt roadwalk is over. At the Boulder Creek camp. This is where we're settling for night number one. It's got a Boulder super Creek. table. <laughs> and it's got a swanky tarp. Aaron, where are we going right now? We are gonna go down in the valley down there. We're gonna go check out these world famous uh, Boulder hot springs. So, uh, Olympic actually has two sets of hot springs, Salduck and here at Boulder Creek. Salduck has been commercialized. I've never seen these ones before, so I'm anxious to see what they're all about. It smells like the top of Mount Hood. It does. <laughs> Stream crossings are a bit more difficult in Olympic Mountains and the Cascades compared to what I've done in the Wind River Range in Idaho because you could just cross in Wind River Range in Idaho and two hours later everything's dry. Uh, it's going to be sunny here so far with the forecast but you know, just like the other trips I've had once you start getting higher up here once your feet get wet. The area is so close to the ocean that 
there's just so much moisture in there, your feet will be wet for the rest of the trip. So that's why they had a more interesting dynamic when backpacking. That's going to be the last up right there. First ice axe use of the trip. We're gonna skip so much by not going down to that. <laughs> what do you think of the climb up? Uh, it's a typical Olympic ascent. 3,000 plus feet elevation. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that in very many other mountain ranges, you know? it's. It's the Olympic isn't a high plateau. It's it comes straight up from sea level and straight up. I mean it's yeah, no, definitely don't want to take a tumble on an Olympic trail. Sorry. Yeah, it's a soft piece of snow. I think it is. I think that's Mount Carey. That's the Heart Lake on the High Divide. Yeah. Not down south. So there we got Mount Baker and Hurricane Ridge. The trail is on and off in the snow. <laughs> got some big bear scat here. If you ever do it, uh, Andrew, go do it in October. Like, I'm gonna miss the beautiful hanging garden. So we're going to be dropping down oh, and getting on this trail right here and go up this way. That's the 
solid drainage right there, that valley. Seem to be up at the headwaters of the soul duck, according to Aaron. Look at that big patch of, uh, really? The mighty soul duck river. <laughs> Such a baby right in here. So there's where we were. Worked along the meadows here, through the trees, up high actually. And there. Drop down. And now, we are working our way back up. We have our eyes peeled for Mr. Bear. We are almost to the Nameless Pass. Well, we're finally getting our views and they are beyond epic. Olympus looks like it has so many glaciers and snow that it's bubbling off of it. And we're out of tripod country. I had to put the tripod away. Olympics are extremely steep and you need as many available hands as possible. Aaron, thoughts of that last 100 foot section? Well, it definitely involves some third class scrambling skills. Even though there's no snow, the ice axes are coming in handy just to give a third step on these steep, you know, these steep slopes. Even with the rock, it just gives you an extra bit of balance. But uh, the trees came in pretty strong coming around this corner here, and up here in this meadow, they go away again. So we're slowly picking through it. it. Just takes time on these roots like this. But we gotta start looking for camp soon. Yep. It is getting later in the So we are on an extremely steep descent and every bush we hit is making tons of little flies and bees very unhappy. Definitely way, way, way out of tripod country here. Hey, look at this family of trees. We're on a decision now on where to set up camp. Well, there's all kinds of at the lake here. right here, but there's people at it. But if we do camp there, there'll be people, so less solitude. We'll be further from uh, where we need to go in the morning, but it'd be pretty. Or we camp somewhere in here, we'll be closer to where we need to go in the morning, but there won't be much of a view. So we're at that decide decision process right now. Let's see what we do. Well, we settled for the meadow camp, and uh, it's a pretty sweet meadow camp. It's always great camping at a lake, but this is a pretty freaking awesome meadow, and we're by ourselves. And we'll get a nice start, because the off-trail we did to get down here would have freaking sucked in the dark, because we got to get a real early start tomorrow. And uh, yeah, up in, unless a bear shows up, I'm going to do some time lapses, but that's it for day number two. Really good day of hiking. Uh, definitely feeling the legs getting stronger as this trip goes on. 
I'm gonna now go eat some mac and cheese and Idaho and mashed potatoes. He's munching away. I want a close up view of him, you can look through my viewfinder. What's that? I want a close up view of him, you can look at through the viewfinder. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's big. Well, you got really good zoom capabilities. Yeah, this thing is crazy. <laughs> it's just eating okay. away. He's super hungry. Yeah. At least he's not mad at us. <laughs> I think he's cool. too preoccupied to be mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh shit, I found some good shit up here. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday we were supposed to get to the other side of Cat Peak, which is in frame right now. So we got a little extra to do today. Here we go. Spray. <laughs> Look at that sun hitting that glacier. Quickly. Yeah. All right, let me get out my 300 millimeter. <laughs> About a quarter mile. <laughs> I can pick him off. <laughs> yeah, I don't see him. He's far away. It might be that same bear. That's a big one. It's not hard to pick out bears. You just gotta look for black dots. I'm gonna watch them. Okay, hot bear. This is not mash. You have ridiculously good vision. I was thinking, um, last one. Uh, this morning's forest walk is extremely relaxing. So the trail just kind of ends there and we were like, whoa, this is sketchy, what the hell? Then we found a little offshoot in the middle there that was also sketchy as hell. We we're like, this can't be it. So Aaron walked further back and found the trail and we just haphazardly stepped over. Someone put these logs here saying, don't go this way. We just stepped over like, oh, deadfall, because there's been so much deadfall. So there we go. Interesting. He's right. So 
some rock climbing right here. Way here. What you think of the catwalk so far? Uh, it demands every ounce of your focus. <laughs> <laughs> There's the other side of Cat Peak. You're still on the catwalk. There's Aaron. Sarah's head just popped up right there. There's Sarah. Woo. Nice view of Olympus in the background. Woo. Woo. Right foot and put it around that rock. Try and get it on the ground. And then you got to go down further than the joys of the Baileys. We're not even in the Baileys yet. <laughs> Sarah, thoughts on the catwalk? Uh, it's just channeling my inner cat mixed with my inner Alex Honnold the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Reminding myself that older people have done this than me. True, very true. Aaron? It's not over with yet. <laughs> that little bit right there, but looks like the rock parts are gone though. Yeah, the rock scrambling is done, the tree climbing is done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were a lot of good solid handholds in there, you know. Um, it was just it demands a lot of focus going through there. You got to be careful. A lot of exposure, a lot of places to fall. So if you do come and do the catwalk, just take it slow. Yep. Goat. We don't want to go that way. <laughs> so I really don't know where that... There's Mount Appleton from day two. Well, there you are. All the way over here. Oh. It came all the way from there. Oh, where's my hand? Aaron led the charge. Kick steps. <laughs> Be careful the whole way. This is an actual glacier right here. I think that's the summit up there, and I hope it is. The heroes approach the summit of Mount Carey. Carabiners up front. Probably should have had these crampons <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. God, that water looks so good down there. Yeah, see that crystal clear blue pocket of melt water. It's like from uh, what's that movie, Water Boy? Mm, yeah, yep. that Alaskan, Alaskan special glacial water that healed him. So Sarah found this moat, and it was caused by elk poop. I wonder if the elk was roped up as well. 
halfway down. So, can't remember, I think there's a mellow slope up there, but I do not know for certain. There's a guaranteed way up there. Either way, I'm gonna be putting my camera away. When the camera's back out, we'll be either up at the top or down at camp. Cause I didn't want to fall and break this thing. So this is the last look of this beautiful basin. Hurricane Ridge is right over there. See the cars in the visitor center sparkling? Super pretty basin. On belay. Climb on. the yeah, other camp. side you see that what's, what's that that soft snow slope oh right here no oh no it's that's not it oh. well i don't know that's where we're going that might be it yeah we just descended that super steep snow slope and uh on the final push to the lake it's pretty late it's a good thing we started at 4 a.m. today. There's just so many different challenges. It was pretty cool. It was like an all's test of every skill of a backpacker. <laughs> our camp for the night. Got a spot here and a spot there. Maybe one over there. Reminds me a lot of the Bannock Lakes ascent arriving at dark. Good morning. I'm eating breakfast, watching the sun. It's already been an hour. We slept in a bit at 6 a.m., a little past six. Today we gotta figure out a way past this guy. We could either go up the snow fields or 
drop down into the valley and go up the tree line. There's a ridge over there and our destination today is Ferry Basin. Yesterday was also my first time on a glacier rope team. And it was really cool. It takes a lot of concentration though. Uh, you have to remind yourself to once in a while taking the scenery you're gonna miss everything. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Today we started right on this guy. Alright, there's our ridge. Too bad. Potential weather coming in. And we are high. started drizzling. Thankfully blue skies started coming in. We were pretty high up. There's a Ron up there. Very close to the top already. Let's do this. Next we're gonna hit up right here just to see what we're dealing with. But I'm gonna put the camera away because I don't want to break this. So here's the view from that point I pointed the last clip. Aaron's gonna show us where exactly we are on the map in a second. This morning we took a trail down into here, across these creeks, we came around. There's an unnamed pond right here that's not on the map. And we climbed this ridge. We saw that lake right there, so it is on the map. And then uh, what we just did is we came up and we just traversed this snow field. And now we're standing right here on this crest of rock. We have to cross this next snow field here. Those spires you see up there is this ridge right here coming off the summit. And then we got to follow this ridge all the way down here. So what he said is for enough. Walk along here, get up onto here and go to this. And then it should be downhill or with a few little maybe ups and downs because the way these basins and ridges are set up. But it's pretty much straight shot to Ferry Basin. Shelby. Here's overlooking Ferry Basin. It's absolutely gorgeous. Both of you, first thoughts of seeing it. <sighs> We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> That's our day tomorrow, the beginning of our day tomorrow. So we're going to have more mountaineering to do on tomorrow and tomorrow to Dogwell Rickson Pass. So I hope you got your crampon points sharp and you're ready to go. Yeah, but it's so fucking worth it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Andrew. Right up from where I'm at. Um, yeah, it's doable. Be careful, I'll be knocked off. I know, too. I come straight to this notch that I 
Sarah, what do you think of the second catwalk? <laughs> um, I like it better than the first one. Huh? <laughs> Almost end of day number four. We got our camp set up. We got here uh, pretty good time. Uh, it was a tough day. Definitely nowhere near as tough as yesterday. Yesterday was gnarly. Um, but yeah, tomorrow we are going to. I can't see. I think that's the gully. We're going to go up that gully right there and uh, had to go over Bear Pass and end up in Dodwell Rickson Pass where we'll also have a rest day at before we begin our journey back down the Elbow River. This place is fantastic, it is really beautiful. No wildlife sighting today, tons of signs of wildlife, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go take a power nap and maybe eat something. Things clear up, I'll uh, start filming. I'll just be relaxing footage for the rest of the evening. Aaron, you said we were going to the Baileys, not the Scottish Highlands. What is this? <laughs> it's very similar to Washington. <laughs> so this is your typical Washington pea soup. <laughs> Day five. Um, we're planning to wake up at 4 a.m. to get a climber start. Uh, or an earlier start, but uh, it was just so misty and socked in. We decided not to go for it because pretty much all of today is mountaineering. And it's about seven, and we're in an inversion right now, so all the tops, the higher elevations are clear, but everything below it is socked in with clouds. What we're seeing right now is as the sun's rising, the clouds are lifting back up and coming for the high country. So, we're gonna see how bad it gets or how quickly it clears. So we're either gonna leave at noon and get to Dottle Rickson Pass late or use our rest day here and uh, get a climber start at midnight uh, later in the evening to get to Dottle Rickson Pass. So, let's see what happens.
seems we made the right call about waiting for the alpine start. The sun has hit the clouds in the inversion and they're lifting up. You can't really see anything right now. We would have been up there, blind, in a borderline whiteout. See the big black dot? Yeah. Munching away. Mm -hmm. He's been there all day. Hopefully the berries are starting to fall. Mm -hmm. I think he's just vegging. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of ice in there. Perfect. So Aaron decided to scout ahead for route in the morning and because it cleared up a bit today and I'm glad we did because it would have been very unfortunate coming through here during the dark because it is absolutely stunning. Good evening. The, uh, we were eating dinner down at our camp. The fog lifted. It revealed our path for tomorrow. And we just had to come up here and check it out to get a little bit of recon for uh, what was in store for us. To be honest, I'm kind of afraid for the unknown, you know? This is really awesome. We gotta come back and do this again. There's just too much to see in the Bailey Range. I'm gonna let them say what they think so far of the Bailey Range Traverse. You go first, sir. Oh, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> totally epic. Um, I don't know, every time you think you've reached the limit, you find something better. Like, we are just hanging out at camp, and camp's pretty, pretty awesome down there. Came up here, almost didn't want to, getting kind of sleepy. We find this beautiful meadow, and then these beautiful glacial lakes, this awesome view of Olympus, it's just, uh, every every time you turn around the corner, it's just something's more in store for you. Yeah, this is one of the most epic trips I've been on. Prettiest air, one of some of the prettiest area I've ever been in, like ever. This place is fucking incredible. Yeah, the camera right now, the tripod is set on top of a bear keg <laughs> that I found up here 
uh, just stashed. It was like a dead body, you know, waiting to be found in this crevice. It's number 147 for the National Park Service. Someone didn't feel like carrying it anymore. Man, this is heavy. Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> this is that bear keg you were talking about earlier. 147. Yep. It's got a few cracks in it. It's got some liquid. We can go home and play a guessing game for what's in this keg. <laughs> drink, it, drink, is it, drink. Is it drink. liquor? Is it water? <laughs> Or is it something else? Bear piss. <laughs> yeah, that person's just like, man, this is heavy. Fuck this. <laughs> just tossed it. Good night, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow, somewhere further up, deeper in the Baileys, on our way to Dodwell, Rickson Pass. Thank you. I'm going to miss this place. I am too. I feel like I got bumblebee or fly PTSD or something. Because earlier, because today's our, we were took our rest day because of how foggy it was. We didn't want to white out up there. Um, there's like a beer fly on the heather around my tent, just making its bean fly noise. It felt like it did it for hours. I don't know if it was caught in the rain fly. I was too lazy to look, but I was listening to it so much that now I hear it everywhere I go. So, uh, hopefully that goes away because it's kind of annoying. I think there's a bee everywhere. There could be bees everywhere. I'm just not seeing them, but slightly here in that bumblebee even up on this marine that's all just wanted to say that We just got past the shoot here in the basin I was filming last evening. Take photos. You're safe nowhere from the bear. Next, we're going to get up there, go either over here or over here up to this guy. This pass we're on is called Lone Tree Pass. He's got a little friend or two. Can you tell which way the wind blows most often?
moved up on the other side of those stones. So we're gonna drop down there. Work along here, up to this guy. Aaron, before we get any closer to Dabal Rickson or Bear Pass, yeah. before you see it with your own eyes, <laughs> what does it mean to you? Well, ever since I bought my first map of Olympic National Park, I had noticed Dabal Rickson Pass and I knew it was a place that I wanted to go to. And I'm glad that I finally get a chance to make those dreams come true. It's been a long time. You know, I've been hiking and mountaineering and backpacking in this range for over 10 years. And uh, I can't believe it's, I've waited this long to see it. So, but it's about the path and the journey that gets us there. And this whole adventure has been outstanding. It's, I can't even explain. You gotta come see it for yourself and uh, you gotta leave some to memory too. You know, you can't just take pictures of everything. It's, it's, uh, this is one of the best trips I've ever done in the Olympics. Probably the best. Probably the best. We've got a long way still. A lot of curveballs. <laughs> Pencil slate, it used to be horizontal, now it's vertical. <laughs> So we're gonna go to this point right here and eyeball this way to see if it's to bear pass. If not, we gotta go to what I pointed out earlier, this guy. Here's Mount Carey, we were on that in day three. Now we're pretty far away. Right here. Going around that corner. We went up in that notch, the first one, not the far one. Crawled through it. Took us down the scree slope. Aaron scouted ahead and he says he think it'll work. Getting closer to Dadwell Rickson Pass. There is Bear Pass. Getting closer. It's the home stretch now to Dadwell Rickson. Here's that other notch we we're looking at. So they both work. Here's where we came from this morning. Making good time with the Alpine start.
I think we just keep following the rock. If you're looking at the contour map, we actually gotta go to the tip of this guy. Bit of snowpack here in the Olympics. It was a good year. They're calling for La Nina this year, and that means a lot more snow coming this winter. So hopefully this forms the next glacier. It's a lot of snow. There it is. It's out of Elrickson Pass. Still pretty snow filled. So we're gonna have to get a little creative with finding um, some camp spots, but we'll find them. So we're at our probably already are dry camp spot right now. After today, we only got one more thing to do, and that's the bushwhack slash snow finger. Then we're back on nice and easy trails. It is July 18th, and they are only beginning to bud. Must only have a month and a half of budding and growing. And here's the start of the snow finger. Looks like this portion's intact. We'll see what happens further down.
spotted a carn. We're gonna cross over now. We just worked our way up diagonally from that carn through lots of slide alder. Trail came in a bit up in the pine forest, then it's dropping back down. It's starting to fade a little bit in this grass, but it brought us out to this amazing view. So about 500 feet from that ice lobe uh, in the Elwha River, uh, Aaron spotted a big carn with the stick that was broken laying on the side with the flag on it. So I crossed and uh, checked it out and there was uh, another red flag and a white flag so like this had to be the way so we went up almost like diagonally from that along the river bend. and. Uh, the trail was faint here and go, but if you look hard enough, you could see it through the slide alder. Just stick with that, it just keeps going up and up and up. And uh, then you'll start getting closer to pine trees. Once you get closer to the pine trees, it opens out and then you hit this amazing basin with this, these excellent waterfalls right here. Once we reached Elwha Basin, a faint trail started and then abruptly disappeared in chest-high grass. I didn't film this section due to how brushy it was and how many times we were falling over. The tall grass hid thousands of trip hazards. It's a miracle none of us broke anything or stepped on a bee's nest in the maze. We followed what we thought would be another faint trail, but it vanished. Any direction we went led to an impenetrable walls of alder. I saw a faint footpath on the other side of the Elwha tributary. We crossed the river to see where it went. It also led to an impenetrable wall of brush. We knew the official trail started on the east side of the river, but every line we took led us nowhere. We were burning too much time at this section. We recouped after additional scouting missions without our packs, and we were about to decide that we would walk the whole tributary river knee-deep the whole way to the crossing of the Elwha. We were second guessing ourselves a lot. That's when I saw a path of least resistance from our vantage point. It looked less brushy than the rest, though that's not saying much as it was still pretty packed with brush. As a team, we opted for that way over the river walk. It was slow going, but we made progress. The last 40 feet was hands and knees crawling under alder before we made it out to the river. From there we crossed and finally found the trail. It felt like a monumental victory. But we had to make up ground. Fast. Bailey's got it. Yet another bear.
Ja, Düsseldorf und der Rhein, Rhein River, Ruhr River. Isn't that weird? Ja, Düsseldorf. We are at the Lillian River Camp uh, on our 20 to 24 mile, whatever it is, hike out. And we got like 10 miles left. And I've eaten my last food. But I feel good. And uh, yeah, ready for the sins of civilization, like a burger or something. But uh, I'll, once I get back to the vehicle, have a little breakdown. Absolutely epic, epic adventure. And uh, ran into a cool dude last night, Robert. Thank you for the uh, setting up the campfire for us, Robert. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a great trip. If you did, let us know in the comment section or I'll find you on Facebook. And uh, yeah, 10 more miles or so. So we just completed the Bailey Traverse. And this is our final day. We just came from the Hayes River, somewhere between 23 to 25 miles in one day. My feet are killing me. And uh, never felt better. <laughs> this absolutely epic adventure, almost unequivocal. Uh, the Baileys are something else. And the massive road walk you gotta take to get out there, just makes it even more remote than it already was. So, ask Sarah first, Sarah, any final thoughts or things you noticed in the Baileys that you're, just anything? <laughs> things are epic, they're totally worth it. Um, I don't know, I don't have any favorite parts. <laughs> My least favorite parts. Definitely, um, you do it, the L on drainage kind of stuff. <laughs> just heads up. Everything else is actually pretty, pretty awesome, even the other bushwhacks. That one. <laughs> um, Mount Perry was definitely a highlight, um, and our early start day was definitely. That was really cool. Yeah, that was just an awesome day all around. At least until we got to camp and started sweating in our tent. Yeah, this awesome. trip was hot. <laughs> the temperature was hot. Yeah. Except for that one foggy day, but the hot springs, the trails, the off trail cross-country, mountaineering, crampons and ice axes, peak bagging, the, the creek crossings. Uh, we met one of Andrew's followers. Uh, what was his name? Robert, Robert Hermes. Hermes. Robert Hermes. Thanks for the fire, <laughs> Robert Hermes. Uh, 25 miles in one day, thinking problems that we had to do, getting out of Elwha Basin the physical challenges that we kept accepting and just crushing, uh, the sweat, the blood, the tears, <laughs> literally all blood. of it, the bugs, uh, the final ups. I kept on saying this is the final up, guys. This is the final <laughs> up, guys. They just kept coming. It just kept coming. Uh, I don't think I could have drank enough water. You know, my, I, I just sweat it all out. I feel purified and cleansed by the wilderness. We only got a week to wait until we go back at it again for another butt buster. <laughs> one of the most epic Olympic adventures ever. I don't think I've ever seen I don't know, the greatest collection of peaks that we just saw. Um, and I've hiked in Olympic a lot. I've done a lot of hiking, a lot of backpacking, a lot of climbing here. And I have to say, this was probably one of the best ones I've ever done. The company made it yes. excellent. You uh, guys are awesome laughing the whole time, <laughs> joking. There was never any complaining, you know, besides like aches and pains. And Elwha Basin. And Elwha Basin. <laughs> Watch out for Elwha Basin, it's a maze. So, just get out here and enjoy it, you know, while, while it's still here, while the trails are still in, and uh, challenge yourself. I'm ready for the post-success depression now. Yeah. <laughs> And there you have it. That is the Bailey Traverse. Thank you for watching. All right, let's go to 7-Eleven. Woo! Woo! <laughs>
you think 